So let's take a few quick ideas and some comments on a little higher level. Where would you see primary, secondary? What are some applications you might want to take a look at? Here's a typical one with primary, secondary chiller loop. And I have three chillers, three pumps, common pipe, secondary loop of variable flow. I got constant flow in the chillers, variable flow on the secondaries. Let's just take a look, uh, a couple other quick comments, questions that come up all the time. Uh, you engineers are always asking, where is the best place to put a roll air troll on primary, secondary chiller systems? Uh, it will work at many different locations, no doubt. But we believe where we got it shown here, and this is what Bell and Gossett preaches, put it on the return from the secondary loop. That's where you're going to have the hottest water and the lowest pressure right there because it's close to the common. Get it close to the common coming on the hot return water, and that would be the best place to put it to get the most air. So that would be our answer to that question that comes up all the time. Uh, so now going back to a primary or secondary loop, we have a dedicated pump per chiller. You see the common pipe, and you see the secondary pumps going off. And we kind of play with this a little bit to see if you want to stand by. We could just add a butterfly between the two chillers there and shown. Now you've got either pump to either chiller. You've got a great little primary secondary setup with a dedicated pump per chiller. Uh, the new things that are coming on, obviously, are some people like to pants leg them together with parallel pumps as shown. It's still primary, secondary. You see the green, green common pipe, you've got secondary pumps. But if you've got a pipe in this way and they're not dedicated pumps in a primary or secondary loop, you need to put two-way isolation valves on each chiller as shown and flow limiters on each chiller just to protect them. And it's another old seminar we can dig into deeper, but I'm just cautioning you, if you want to pipe in this way, great. Just make sure you have the two-way isolation valves and you have the flow limiter. So let's put a little notes on the common pipe from these and G. People always asking the questions, how long did a common pipe needs to be? What is the max pressure drop in a common pipe? And, they, and BG's answer is very none, but you know, they want to about everybody wants a real good number. Let's give you a real number. BG is going to say, try to keep your max pressure drop not to exceed a foot and a half or 18 inches. Foot and a half, 18 inches. Very easy to do if you put two T's to keep it close together. Uh, they also like to make sure that pipe size is, 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 is the same pipe size or equal to the pipe size of your largest children. The other comment is what is the minimum length between the two T's? Don Gossett did a lot of testing with this, put it in the lab and trying to force flows to have a problem. And their, their comment came back, let's make it a minimum of three pipe diameters and let's keep the pressure drop to less than a foot and a half. You're not going to have any problems. So there's your answer. Three feet max, keep it a foot and a half pressure drop. You, won't have, you will not have any mixing problems. Thank you very much for your time.